Do you have clear expectations and a way to measure them? And have you articulated that to your new team members? I don't care what role they sit in in your company, whether they're administrative, marketing, sales, I call it clinical. Um, those are like the teachers, the service providers, et cetera. Are they a virtual assistant? Are they executive? Welcome back to another episode here of Female Empowered. I'm your host, Krista Gurka, and I'm just going to do a really quick little reintroduction of myself. Um, I've been noticing that there have been a lot more downloads now to my podcast. Woohoo! I think we're over 30,000 downloads, which I'm so excited about. I didn't actually know anyone would ever listen, but I've realized that if you're new to the show, you may not know exactly who I am or what I do or why I'm spewing out this information in a on a mic. So I am Krista Gurka. I am almost 49 years old. I am a wife. I'm a mother of two. I am the founder and CEO of Pilates in the Grove, which is a full service Pilates boutique Pilates studio and concierge physical therapy and recovery service um, company with a two brick and mortar locations in Miami, Florida. By degree, I am a physical therapist. I have my master's of science in physical therapy. I am also a nationally certified Pilates teacher. Um, we started Pilates in the Grove back in 2010. And over the last um, dozen years, it has grown into a eight figure business. Um, we generate seven figures annually. Currently, at, in 2022, we are up to, I want to say 12 employees, 11 employees at the height we were at 21 employees. Um, but we have kind of restructured the company since 2020. And what I do with this podcast is one, I talk a lot about just empowering women, empowering females, empowering our voices to be heard, giving us confidence. I want to be an example to other women of what's possible that you can start, own, operate a business, a successful business, a sustainable business that makes, you know, that generates a hefty revenue, a hefty profit for you and a good salary, a good income. And without a business degree, I don't have an MBA. Like I said, I have a master's of science in physical therapy. That's what I have. Um, but what I do have is a ton of curiosity and I'm always eager to learn and I'm a constant learner. And so what I wanted to do with this podcast is just come up, come out and talk about you know, pull back the curtain behind what makes boutique fitness, wellness, healthcare businesses successful, especially as women who run them and women who also run households and who have our own needs that we need to be met. So in a nutshell, that is me, if you're new to the podcast. Um, and so today's episode, what we are going to talk about is what you actually need to retain, to attract first and then retain top talent for your six figure business in boutique healthcare, wellness, and fitness. Okay. And I say six figures because if you want to get past the six figure mark without you working 80 hours a week, you are going to need to have a team. You don't have to have a no. When people say team, sometimes people think of like 10 people. No, a team could be one person. A team could be two people. A team could be three part-time people. Um, but eventually, if you want to break the six-figure mark without working yourself into the ground and sustain that for years to come, you're going to eventually at some point have to hire a team. It might be a part-time team, um, but you're going to have to do that. And especially now with like whatever they call it, the great resignation, quiet quitting, all of this stuff, it's really important to attract the right kind of people to your, your team. Okay. I talk about, again, from the book traction, we talk about right people in the right seats. So you could have the right people on your team. They align with your mission, vision, and values, but they might not be in the right seat in your company. Or you could have the person in the right seat, but they're the wrong person. 
Okay. So, and then what I say about that is if you reward toxicity in your business, it is like a bad apple. It will run through your business, especially if in your, you're in a small business, like rapid fire. Okay. So it's really important that we do not reward toxic culture and toxic employees. And the way we reward them is by not reprimanding them or allowing them to continue to be in our business because they are such high producers or high performers. Okay. So what I'm going to talk about today is the must haves to attracting and retaining top talent when you're want to approach or are in your six figures and are looking to level up to that next level of revenue. Okay. So like I said, it is really important when he talked about mission, vision, and values, you have to know what those are. I think it was like in Hamilton where they, it's one of the songs where they're like, if you stand for nothing, what will you fall for? So if you don't know what you stand for, what will you fall for when you, when you have people on your team or clients that are walking all over you? So some people, I used to think this too, that like coming up with a mission statement and a vision statement and what are our core values was just, you know, not necessary, but as my company, and I don't know that it's necessarily necessary to start your business, but as you grow, it has really made so many things so much easier in my business, so much easier because we clearly talk about our core values all the time in all our performance reviews, in all of our meetings. And so if we are talking to somebody about how well they're performing or if they're underperforming, it's always related to our core values. So that's very clear. So if you don't have clearly delineated, expressed, written down, not just in your head, mission, vision, and values, how do you know if you're hiring the right people? How do you know if they align with what you're trying to do? Okay. And your values can be whatever you want. Okay. They can be whatever you want. If you really just want a bunch of high performers on your team and you don't care if they're good team players, that's fine. Just make sure you don't have people on your team that want to be team players. Okay. If you want everyone to be team players, make sure that you articulate that and you put language around that. So people know what their expectations are. Okay. The other thing is that you have to have a solid onboarding process. Now, if you think about what our industry is, boutique health, health, boutique health, boutique healthcare, wellness, think cash-based physical therapy practices, regular physical therapy practices, massage therapy, spinning, boutique fitness, Pilates, yoga. The general rule of thumb here is like, oh, great, you have your Pilates certification, welcome, day one, here's your eight classes and here's your schedule. And that's what the onboarding process is, okay? Do you agree? Is that what your onboarding process is in your business? Is that what you've experienced coming in as an instructor? And that is certainly what I did for a long time because that's how I was trained. Here's your schedule, go to it. You know how to do an eval, et cetera, et cetera, okay? The problem with that is, is that the hard skills are there, teaching a class, working with clients, but the soft skills are like how you want to put language around how people should schedule. What is your your unique selling proposition? (coughs) Excuse me. What gets people coming back in the door? How do you want your staff to answer the phones? This is like a big one for me. It drives me crazy when people answer the phone, Pilates in the Grove. Okay, we have a very, and you might think I'm crazy, but it's a script. It's, hello, thank you for calling Pilates in the Grove. This is Chris speaking. How may I help you today? Okay, Pilates in the Grove is lazy. We're not lazy. We are a high touch service. You can be lazy, okay? If you wanted to work for maybe someone that's like a commodity, okay? I wouldn't necessarily expect someone that worked at like, I don't know, some, you know, McDonald's, I don't need to put McDonald's out there. Maybe I don't know how they answer the phone. Okay. But my point is, if you do not have an onboarding process, okay, this is how we start a Pilates class. This is how we end a Pilates class. These are my expectations of you. This is, I expect you to have, you know, 80% utilization on your schedule. Now, this is the problem with having contractors versus employees, because if you have contractors, Technically, you're not supposed to have any expectations of them. 
okay? Which makes it really difficult to have consistency in your brand, which makes it very difficult for clients and staff to be bought in to your community, which makes attrition and people leaving easier. Okay, so there's, all, there's a method to the madness here. So create a solid and perfecting onboarding process. So like our inner circle members, and I think even in FitBiz Foundations, they get this template in our program. Like what exactly is the onboarding process? In day one, day three, week one, week two, week four, week six, day 90, what is that process? and how you clearly articulate that to your new team members and how you evaluate that and, and reward for and hold people accountable for that, okay? So hand in hand with that is, do you have a policy and procedure manual for people to follow? Do you have SOP, standard operating procedures? How are people supposed to answer the phone? If you need to put them on hold, I tell people this all the time, can I place you on hold is a question. You have to wait for an answer, okay? It's not like, can I place you on hold? Click, may I place you on a brief hold? Yes, okay, thank you so much. It's a question that requires an answer, okay? If there's emails, what is your expectation of how, how long they should take to reply to them? What are your policies and procedures? Okay, having systems down makes everything, everything run smoother. Do you have clear expectations and a way to measure them? And have you articulated that to your new team members? I don't care what role they sit in in your company, whether they're administrative, marketing, sales, I call it clinical. Um, those are like the teachers, the service providers, et cetera. Are they a virtual assistant? Are they executive assistant? Like whatever they are, there should be clear expectations. My expectation is you're going to do these three or four or five things really, really well, and you will do amazing at this job. Okay. And there's no ego, like leave it at the door, leave the ego at the door. Okay. If people on your team don't like clarity, if they don't like you being clear with them, Okay. And as Brene Brown says, clear is kind. If they don't like being clear and having clarity, they won't like accountability. And if they don't like accountability, they don't belong on your team. I don't care how high performing they are. Now I recognize that, that this is a really hard thing to do because many of us feel beholden to our team, because if they leave, that means we as owners have to jump back in and teach 10 more classes but how can we help you? How can we help you change that for the future? How can we help you start to stack your team with the right individuals that you can then say goodbye to the wrong individuals? Okay, how can you do that? How can you start to build a culture of clarity and accountability and trust? It can be done. It doesn't happen overnight. But, you know, it's frequently what we talk about in our mentorship groups, how to have the tough conversations, how to hold space for people and for yourself as well. Okay. It's really important to put your people first, treat your employees, treat your team like you want them to treat your customers. It goes a long way. And that doesn't mean with money. Sometimes a thank you goes a long way. Thank you, acknowledgement, appreciation, okay? Putting people first is a great way to attract and keep top talent, okay? When you look at all these like great companies that are voted best companies to work for year over year over year, one of the things that they talk about is they're, they're like, it's a great place to work. We feel like they put people first, okay? There's no ego. There's no, that's not my job, okay? So here are some things that also will help you retain retain good people that come to you, okay? So they don't quiet quit on you or start to disengage. One, create career paths. Now I know people are like, well, it's Pilates. Well, no, Pilates is a career. You can make high five, even six figures as a Pilates teacher. And I, any of you that are rolling your eyes right now, if you wanna come, I'm hiring. Pilates in the Grove is hiring in Miami, Florida. 
Okay. Our Pilates instructors, not physical therapists, our Pilates instructors make upwards of $75,000 a year with benefits and paid time off. Okay. Working roughly 30 to 35 hours a week. It's not a bad gig. Okay. So create career paths. Also what we mean by career paths is what else are they passionate about? Are they passionate about marketing? Could they eventually help sit in a seat in your, on your marketing team or a social media team, okay? What I don't believe in is having people do social media and marketing if that's not their passion. Because then that just builds resentment and they're usually not that good at it anyways, all right? Promote your mission. Talk about it all the time. We talk about it all the time. We talk about it in all our performance reviews, in our quarterly conversations, in our staff meetings, um, all the time we're talking about our mission. It allows not only your team, but your clients to know where it is that you're going. And people like to be part of something that's bigger than them, especially now, especially this younger generation. They want to have an impact. Okay. And so making sure like promoting your mission, talking about it a lot so that everyone knows the direction we're going in and why we're going in that direction at this pace. Foster a, a culture of innovation, okay? Stifling innovation is one of the first steps to stifling growth. And when you, if you don't innovate, blockbuster, movie theaters, um, like if you don't innovate, you die, all right? So I think it's one of the things that our industry, boutique fitness, boutique wellness, we need to start, we need to be dedicated to growth and we need to be innovators in our industry, okay? We don't need to remove the personalization. I don't believe that, but we need to figure out what can we do? How can we stay relevant, okay? How can we stay relevant, Partner with, you know, you can also partner with a specialized staffing company. Um, I use, I'll give a shout out to Good Soul Hunting. Um, Lucy Addy and her team, like they helped me find my chief operating officer. So they don't recruit for um, the, like the clinical staff, um, teachers and practitioners, but they do recruit for executive and leadership roles. So if you're looking for you know, a higher executive on your team to have, so bring someone in as a chief operating officer or chief financial officer or director of operations or high management. Um, Good Soul Hunting is a great staffing company and we had a wonderful, wonderful experience with them. So shout out to all of them over there. Now, one of the things that I learned when I was learning how to be a better leader and also how to better systematize my hiring, onboarding, and retention of my team. One of the things that I learned was what we call the six R's, okay? And this really, really changed how I hire and train people. So the R's stand for role, responsibility, requirements, results, reward, and renew. Okay, so the way that we talk about this is you have to have a clearly delineated role. I see a lot of people make the mistake of hiring a person and then finding a role for them. No, you should have the role created and then find the person, the right person for that role. So have the role created, okay? Within that role, there needs to be very specific responsibility. So if it's, a, if it's an instructor, their, what are their responsibilities? Is it program design? Is it facilitating a class? Is it touching base with customers after the class? Is it cleaning the studio? What are their exact responsibilities? Okay. What are the requirements to perform this job? Do they need to have knowledge of QuickBooks? Do they need to have knowledge of, you know, Google Workspace? What are the requirements of this job, of this role and the responsibilities they are expected to they're expected to be responsible for. I lose my word sometimes. Um, okay, results. What are the results that you're looking for? Are the results to have 80% utilization in every class? Are the results to have like a 70% retention rate? Are the results, 
expected that they will have a 50% new client conversion rate. What are the results that you are looking for? They sh there should be specific results for which you are going to evaluate their performance. Okay. Reward. How are you going to reward them for the results on taking, you know, doing the responsibilities for the role they were hired for? Okay. And then are you going to renew, right? Are you going to update the role, update the responsibilities, or are you choosing like not to renew? Okay. So role, responsibility, requirements, Results, reward, renew. Now, if you're interested in really learning about that for your business, then I really invite you to join our mentorship programs because these are the things we talk about and how do we set them up for your specific organizational chart or your specific company? What roles do you actually need to fill in your company so that you can start delegating things off of your plate? Okay. Now, some really, really, really important things. I say this all the time. Okay. There are some soft skills that sometimes are hard. The last episode that we just aired was all about why sometimes entrepreneurs don't make great leaders. And this is sometimes where our strength of being like growth oriented and mindset and accomplishment oriented becomes our kryptonite when we don't put people first, because we're always going, going, going. So give your employees love. Treat your employees like you want them to treat your customers. So they won't want to leave. They won't want to leave. They will be so fulfilled working for you that even on the bad days, because this is work, there's going to be bad days. They're still going to align with your mission and they're going to be like, oh, today was a crappy day, right? They're going to be okay taking accountability. They won't want to leave. Market your business the two top prospects, the same way you would market your business to clients. Okay. You know, I want to actually like read you something that I got the other day. Um, let me see, where is it? So somebody sent this to me, a new staff member that we are actually training and we're onboarding her right now. She sent me this in an email and it, it just made my day because we really sometimes as owners, and CEOs and, and the business owners, we don't get this a lot, right? Because nobody's above us telling us we're doing a great job. So this really, really meant a lot to me. But she wrote me and she said, you might not get this. And, and she did get in like air quotes, you might not get this anymore because it's also your business and place of work. But I so very much look forward to going to the studio, whether it's for apprentice teaching like I am tonight, for my own personal practice on the reformer, or just to mingle with the team. The better part of my Monday workouts begin after 5 p.m., even if I have butterflies in my stomach by going to apprentice with you. So she has a full-time job. She's actually a full-time marketer. She's very successful. She has her, she has her, um, she works for a big brand and she's, she loves Pilates and she wanted to learn how to do it. And, and I talked to her, she's went through our teacher training program and she was eager to kind of come on. And for her to say that to me, like she has a full-time career to say that she loves coming in after a full day of work and learning how to be a better Pilates instructor so she can take on the role of Pilates instructor in our studio just makes all the hard times worth it, okay? So again, sometimes you gotta get out of your own damn way as an owner and just be nice to people. Say thank you to them, build them up in some way swallow your own shit and like realize that there's other human beings on the other side of that. Okay. Cause without them, we'd be nowhere. We'd be working 80 hours a week. Okay. Make sure that when you're interviewing, you're interviewing for a culture fit. They may be the best instructor in the world. They may be the best physical therapist with great outcomes. But like I said, if we reward toxic people, it's a surefire way to kill morale in your company. So make sure that they are gonna be a good fit. I'll give you another example. We had somebody on our team a few years ago that was an amazing instructor, phenomenal. She was a physical therapist. She owned her own practice at one point. Great, the clients loved her. She was very skilled. The team really liked her. She was great, but she did not wanna cover for anyone. She only wanted to work time she wanted to work. She always wanted to be off when her kids were off, which again is fine. But if you're not going to help other people 
And we were really in a bind where somebody had resigned that worked the weekends. And I was like, listen, I think we're all going to have to rotate on a weekend just until we get a new person on our team. And she said, no, she said she didn't want to do it. So how could I expect all of the rest of the team to do it? Right. Because she thought that she had some power because she was very full and she was a really, really, really sought after instructor. And we had, I didn't let her go, but I just said, I need you. This is my expectation that you pick a Saturday to work over the next three months. And she chose not to. So that was her choice to get off the bus at that point. Okay. But this is, again, you have to have a good culture fit. Okay. Develop a growth mindset and emotional um, intelligence and maturity, not just for you, super important for you as a business owner, um, but for your team, develop growth mindset and emotional maturity in them. And then last but not least, invest in your team. You know, I hear this all the time. You know, what if I spend all this money and invest in them and then they leave? Well, that's like a very short-minded, that's a scarcity mindset to have. Because the flip side of that, and I didn't coin this, people say this all the time. What if you don't invest and they stay? Okay. If I invest in my people, it's going to make them better, which is going to make the company better, which is going to make the clients happier, which is going to eventually work for everybody. You know, and if they choose to leave, that's their prerogative. But if you make it such a great workplace, because by the way, entrepreneurship is hard AF. Okay. There are a lot of things that come with this that not everyone is cracked out to be. And there is a freedom in being an amazing employee and having autonomy and agency and feeling valued and appreciated and being able to bring home high five figures without having the risk on your shoulders of what business ownership actually is. And there's a, you know, there's a beauty to that, a freedom in that. Not everyone's meant, not everyone's set out to be an entrepreneur. And this is part of the problem. I think so many messages out there is like, go out, do it yourself. All these cash-based PT gurus are telling people coming out of school, start your own business. Not everyone is meant to be a business owner. Okay. It takes a skill set that not everybody has. All right. And there's nothing wrong. There is nothing wrong with wanting to be someone's right hand. You get like the best of both worlds. Okay. You get to kind of drive the caboose, drive the, you know, it's like being co-pilot, right? You get to be up there in the cockpit. You don't necessarily have all the risk on your shoulders. All right. So I really, really hope you enjoyed this episode. I really enjoyed creating it and researching it. So it's really important right now, especially with all the staffing shortages that are around the country. Um, I don't know very many places that are not trying to hire right now. Um, we are eagerly hiring at Pilates in the Grove. If anyone's listening to this and wants to move to Miami and be a Pilates instructor, we're looking for people. But you have to align with our vision, mission, and values. You have to be emotionally intelligent or willing to learn how to be. You have to be a team player, okay, and be accountable um, for your roles and responsibilities. So, well, that's all I have for you right now. It would really, if you like this episode or some of the other episodes we've recently aired, and you would just take a moment, look at your phone, unless you're driving, don't do it, but look at your phone, scroll down to the bottom where you're listening to this podcast and just leave a review for me. Just please, 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 please. It'll take you, by the time I'm finished saying the sentence, you could have already done it. If you would be so kind as to add a few words, that would be great. But my mission is to get as many of these like tips and tricks into the hands of female business owners and boutique health and wellness so that they can strive to be financially independent and run and operate sustainable and profitable business businesses. All right. So if you would be so kind as to help me help you and leave a review, that would really mean a lot to me. All right. And until next time, my friends, bye for now. <laughs>